Please welcome constitutional law attorney and Fox News contributor, Shanna Ellis Reed. Thank you. <laughs> Well, that was a surprise. Thank you so much to my dear husband, Anna. We have been married two months, and our hashtag for our wedding was make marriage great again. <laughs> Woo, right? <laughs> yes. And uh, that, was, that was just so much fun. And uh, that begins what I want to talk about, which is making America great again. Yes, let's share that. We need to make America great again. Those are the words on the iconic red hats that many of you so boldly and proudly wear today. This idea of making America great, again, it presumes that we must go back to our original intent, our original design, our original understanding of greatness. In our modern time, when defending individual freedom is not a universal purpose, we should rightly consider why America's initial greatness rested on her founder's understanding of the universality of this unalienable right. Our first freedoms, the right to speak, to freely associate, to freely exercise our religion, these are essential to greatness. Though our founders had wide variations and opinions of the best way to preserve and protect our first freedoms, America was birthed under one common purpose, a unanimous declaration. Our shared purpose for civil society was a novel and truthful recognition that our first freedoms, and indeed all of our rights, are pre-political. They're endowed by God our creator, not our government, and are part of our immutable humanity. Our, our founders unanimously declared that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is what made America great at her inception, her reliance on truth and on God himself. Recognizing that our government exists to serve the people and to protect our rights, our founders therefore created a system of government that separated powers into three co-equal branches. But not just on the federal level horizontally, we also separated them vertically. Recognizing that specific powers are given to the federal government under the US Constitution, to the state government under the state constitutions, but that all powers not given specifically to government are reserved to we the people. We the people have the power of self-government. We have the right to liberty and freedom. To make America great again and to keep America great, we must conserve and reignite our common purpose. We must continue to elect leaders across our state and federal offices who will conserve our right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. The right to self-government for all. In his July 4th Independence Day tribute, which I loved, it was amazing. Uh, yes, let's cheer that. Woo! I know, the mainstream media didn't do that enough. <laughs> President Trump quoted our declaration's unanimous common purpose. He acknowledged God, our creator. He made a promise to the American people, to you and to me, that he would defend the American experiment of freedom and liberty and self-government. President Trump has made promises, and he has kept those promises to make America great again. Woo! On the right to life, let's talk about some things that the media won't talk about. The media won't talk about what President Trump has done and has taken extensive steps to dismantle Title X of the Public Health and Human Service Act. It prevents further funding of all programs where abortion is a method of family planning. He has continued to defund Planned Parenthood to the greatest extent possible to eradicate abortion in the United States. Let's cheer that. The president has pushed to unite Congress around the preservation of life for all, particularly for the unborn, 
for the weak and the defenseless who can't speak for themselves, and continue the thorough defunding of Planned Parenthood. Conservatives, conserving truth, conserving that first freedom of life, have always fought to protect innocent life. We believe that a child in the womb is entitled to the same protections that all babies are afforded. Life is so precious and should be protected. We have long stood on the side of reducing and eradicating the number of abortions in our country because we understand that life is given by God. We have to protect it. We absolutely have to protect it. And in order to protect that, we are, I believe, so close to repealing Roe versus Wade. On judicial appointments, President Trump validated my vote in 2016 when he nominated Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court, right from here in Colorado. That was a really exciting moment when he nominated an originalist to the Supreme Court in only the time that he has served on the bench. Neil Gorsuch has proven himself to be a champion of the Constitution, our first freedoms, and specifically religious freedom. And then on July 9th, 2018, President Trump nominated Justice Brett Kavanaugh, who is the best of the best, has a very thorough track record of defending the Constitution, deciding cases based on the rule of law and not personal policy preferences like we have seen so often from Justice Roberts. President Trump has nominated and confirmed the most Article III judges, 123 so far. And some of you may not realize what this actually means, but from a legal standpoint, 99% of the cases heard on the federal level don't ever get to the U.S. Supreme Court. They only hear about 1% of cases. This means that the federal judges on the circuit and district level are making decisions that impact our families, religious freedom, freedom of speech, all of our protections of liberty every day, and those decisions are staying in place. By nominating and actually confirming 123 so far, this is changing the face of the judiciary back to originalism, back to conservatism. And we are on the brink of returning the Ninth Circus back to an originalist court. And what this means is not that one party over the other will win every single time, but that the rule of law will prevail, that the rights that are endowed by our creator will be protected. Conservatism means protecting and conserving that truth. And we need judges who will stay in their rightful constitutional margin and will make sure that they are protecting and preserving our rights, not being activists. On religious freedom, President Trump has prioritized religious freedom. He has shown this in every aspect of the administration. He signed an executive order promoting free speech and religious liberty. It reads in part that all executive departments and agencies shall to the greatest extent practicable, practicable and to the extent permitted by law, respect and protect the freedom of persons and organizations to engage in religious and political speech. The pro-life governor of Kansas, Sam Brownback, was successfully confirmed as the ambassador of international religious freedom with the, with the mission of promoting religious liberty globally. The State Department, for the first time last year, held an international ministerial on religious freedom to make sure that this unalienable human right is protected and preserved globally. America is stepping out being an advocate and a leader on religious freedom. And I could go on on so many different accomplishments, but the highlight 
of the administration is that it's dedicated to conserving our common purpose in the context of government and civil society. We have to commend our president for preserving and protecting these rights. Since our founding, we, the people of the United States, prove every day that genuine freedom to preserve and pursue truth and pursue God himself provides a foundation upon which society can thrive. It lays a foundation for boundless opportunity, for prosperity, security, and peace, for self-government. In the words of President Trump, we now need to keep America great. We need to be the beacon of light to the world, displaying greatness and keeping the eternal flame of liberty burning strong. So I want to leave you with the words of our great Vice President, Mike Pence, speaking to religious liberty leaders around the world at last year's first ministerial on religious freedom. I was there, and I heard him say this that I want to close with faith, faith in the good people of this nation of faith, the United States of America. And from our founding, have cherished that foundation of belief and cherish it still. Faith in our president, whose deep commitment to religious liberty at home and abroad has been evident every day of this administration. Faith in all of you in the nations represented here and your renewed commitment to the cause of religious liberty and in your nations around the world. And I also close with faith that from this renewed beginning today, we will make progress on behalf of religious liberty in the years ahead. My faith ultimately comes from what is in my heart and what I understand of truth. In the words inscribed on our Liberty Bell, displayed in Philadelphia, in the words of the text of Leviticus in scripture, it reads, proclaim liberty throughout all the land and, to, and unto all the inhabitants thereof. We have done it throughout our history. And I know that as each of us renew our commitment to preserve and protect religious freedom throughout all of our lands, where freedom will prevail, the Bible tells us that where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Freedom always wins when faith in God our Father and His Son Jesus Christ is held high. So may God bless the United States of America, and may God keep her great. Thank you.